Hello everybody, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. If you're new to the channel, this episode is here to merely serve as an introduction for what we're going to build this season. I've gone ahead and structured this YouTube channel to act like a TV series where there are seasons, within each season there are episodes, and there is linear progression between episodes and between seasons. So if you're dropping into this one, please go ahead and check out the rest of the channel to find more content that you might be looking for, and don't forget to subscribe if you are brand new. Now that we got the intro out of the way, let's see what we got on screen here. So that is right, the Rick and Morty API, you can tell from the thumbnail that we have decided to go ahead and build a simple application around this very popular TV series. I truly enjoyed watching this with a bunch of my buddies back in college, and I was very happy to hear that there is not only an API for it, but more importantly, it is free. So API here, what is API? It actually stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's basically a way for two different components of a single system to communicate with one another. In our example, we are going to be building an Android app, the Android client, and on the other side of the equation, we have this API, essentially our backend, our server, however you want to look at it. The idea behind an API is that there is a contract between the front end and the back end to allow for bi-directional communication where everyone is on the same page, meaning when the client hits a particular endpoint, we're going to expect a particular format of the data back. And since this is a free API, something that we haven't built, I haven't been a part of, it's very important to review the documentation. So, spoiler alert, if you haven't figured it out, we're not gonna go ahead and dive into code today. Instead, we're just going to talk about the documentation, talk about what the application is going to do, and we will hit the ground running in the next episode, starting off with our implementation of retrofit and talking about exactly what that will do. So taking a look at the documentation here, there is the REST documentation, which is the route that we are going to be going. And we can see here that a critical piece of information is our base URL, rickandmortyapi.com slash API. This means that all of the endpoints that we end up hitting are basically going to all follow this similar path. And then after the API, there will be a slash and then some other information that will differentiate the endpoints that we are going to hit. As you can see here in this little example, the characters endpoint ends in slash character, the location in slash location, and the episode follows the same. And so here it's pretty straightforward that those different endpoints are gonna go ahead and return the appropriate information. We will get into pagination down the road. I know that is a popular topic and that is something that is very important to essentially accomplish an infinite scroll. However, at this moment, we are just going to merely get off the ground with a simple API call, and we will eventually build up to that. So make sure to stay tuned so you don't miss out. Taking a look on the side here, we have different, I guess, sections of their documentation where we can take a look at character, location, and episode. Those are the three primary pillars, I guess, of this API. And so let's just take a look at the characters, specifically a single character here. We go ahead and take a look at the way this endpoint is structured. Now it's going to be a get request, all of these requests are going to be get, but there are other types of requests that you can go ahead and post to the server to basically try to you know, give it a little bit more information of what you're trying to do. In the case of get, all we are going to be doing is we're going to be consuming data. We basically have read access. We're not going to have any write access to the API. So that makes sense. We can see here that the URL for our endpoint follows the format that we were told. HTTPS, rickandmortyapi.com slash API slash character slash two. And as it says here, we can get a single character by adding the ID parameter and then the ID of two will get whatever character has that particular ID. Now we can actually go ahead and take a look at what we call the response. This here is JSON, it is JavaScript object notation. And although it doesn't have any explicit ties to the language JavaScript, it is a standard way for different components of the system to communicate information to one another. In our case, we're going to be consuming JSON, but it's very possible that in other applications, you will also be posting JSON so that the server can actually parse that and then get all the information that it needs. Let's take a look here and we can see a little bit of a structure. So it starts with this open curly bracket it ends with the closing curly bracket and that denotes a single object. Inside of the object here we have different fields that are separated by a comma at the end of each line and basically have a key and then a corresponding value. We can see here that name is basically a, uh, a string right that has the value of Morty Smith however origin is again this syntax here meaning that origin is an object. 
So essentially origin is an object that has two fields on it named name and URL that are both string values. Last thing I want to touch on is that the episode field is actually started with a square bracket and that denotes an array. Just like general programming, the only rule of arrays is that it's an undefined size of elements that all are the same type, right? So each one of these episodes is going to be a string value here. Makes our life easier for parsing, just goes right into what we know about algorithms and data structures and all that good stuff. So this is really a comprehensive way to fetch a particular character and get the corresponding information. Then we can go ahead and with this information build out some interesting UI. If we take a look back here, these individual cards here that actually don't look too bad all come from having this data structured the way that it is. There's an image URL, there's a name, there's a status, first seen in, the name of a particular episode. All of that information is encapsulated in this individual object. So we are going to dive much further into this when we actually get to the code, get to writing code. But for now, I just wanted to give an overview of exactly what we were getting ourselves into and taking baby steps towards actually building up this application so that we can explore networking in Android together. Outside of the actual API itself, how are we going to interface with it? This is where Retrofit, an open source library from Square, comes into play. I simply got here by searching Retrofit Android. You can't go wrong searching that. And I found myself on their documentation. I find that their documentation is a little bit easier than their GitHub because they don't really have a lot here in the GitHub and the README, and instead they kind of point you to the website anyway. So with that in mind, we are going to be able to essentially build a particular retrofit in instance with a base URL. This is why that was so important before. And then we can go ahead and basically define endpoints here that are the second half of whatever this base URL exists, right? So this full URL here, when we're calling this list repos function, would be api.github.com slash users with a particular user name and then repos after that. So you can see how that would fit very nicely into something like a normal URL. And then we're gonna go ahead and consume the data. There's a whole lot more that we can get into with retrofit, like a request body or a header manipulation or even attaching interceptors to our network requests. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and go with a simple approach and we will build up to that. Unfortunately, this API does not allow us to send information up to the server. It's all just get requests, just read access, but I will touch upon it in a later episode. With that being said here, I have a very simple application that I've gone ahead and called Simple Morty. I don't have a good name for it yet. I would love to make a name for the application that makes sense for what we're building. So if there are any fans of the show out there or you want to have your voice heard, go ahead and drop a comment what you think the app name should be and maybe you will end up naming this application. In this simple scratch file that I added, we have our JSON response so we don't have to end up flipping back and forth to the API documentation. So we will make use of this in the next episode. And when we go ahead and run the application, we have our basic hello world with the name of our app in the toolbar here. So we are starting over, we're starting from scratch. Please like and subscribe if you are not already so that you do not miss out on any of the content that is to come. And we will build this application together. I'm very excited to get some stuff on screen, cover networking, cover probably the most powerful and widespread networking library that exists out there for Android, and we'll just have fun with it. In the next episode, we'll go ahead and dive a little further into Retrofit, get our networking layer up and running, and maybe even make our first API call ever on the channel. I'd love to see you there with me, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.